If you want your expensive fragrance to last longer, to project more, then the first thing you want to do is apply a moisturizer. This should be a neutral moisturizer, an unscented cream. You can use Vaseline as well. Point being is you want to seal up the skin where you're going to apply the fragrance. You see, if you've got really dry skin, it doesn't matter how strong the fragrance is, it's going to evaporate quicker. It is not going to last. So one of the best things you can do is apply that moisturizer again in the areas that you're going to wear the fragrance. By taking this one action, you're going to give even relatively weak fragrances the best chance to last and project. Now that first tip was all about taking care of your skin, but don't forget you can do this within your body as well by drinking more water. It sounds so simple guys, but this right here can help your fragrance last long. Now this next tip is a bit more advanced and that is to layer with ISO E Super or Ambroxan. And right here I've got eccentric molecules, number one and number two, which is ISO E Super and Ambroxan. What happens here? Basically these don't really have much of a smell. They will mix with your fragrance and they will help it project and in some cases, help it last longer. Now, to most people's noses, Isoe Super doesn't really have any scent, and this is my first choice for helping a fragrance last longer. But Ambroxan can do that as well, and a lot of you guys are familiar with Ambroxan because, yeah, Old Sauvage right here, this is an Ambroxan bomb, and really has made it popular for the masses. It's a strong, heavier scent, but it does project, and with this particular scent, I know the ladies love it. Okay, so that's a generalization. Not every lady, I mean, some of them love Dracar. Yeah, this is where it's at. But seriously, the next tip to make your fragrance last longer is actually to go with something vintage. Now, this is a reformulation of Tricar, but if you go through your grandfather's medicine cabinet or you happen to go through your dad's storage closet and you find an old bottle of Dracar, you may be in luck. You see, a lot of the older fragrances were able to use certain ingredients, which nowadays are outlawed. And some of it is just simply because a small percentage of the population is allergic to, in this case, oak moss. So it has been replaced. And these new polo greens are not nearly as strong as the stuff your dad was buying in the 1990s, maybe even in the early 2000s. Point being is a lot of those vintage fragrances out there just have a much stronger and they project so much more. Another great thing about a lot of these vintage scents is that they are relatively inexpensive. Seriously, for less than 20 bucks, you can get a scent that is going to make you smell like a man that's got hair on his chest. But I get it. You don't want to smell like an animal. You want something that's a little bit fresher, still has projection, still has strength. Then look to niche houses. What I like about these guys is a lot of times they're going to use higher concentration of perfume oils. Now, if you're not familiar with the different concentrations of fragrances, it works like this. First up, we've got the wheat weakest version. When I say weakest, it's going to have maybe two to three percent of the fragrance oil mixed in with alcohol. And this is going to be your Eau Fresh. Next, you're going to have Eau de Colognes, which have about two to sometimes five percent. And I know this is officially, it says an EDT, but I think it smells more like an Eau de Cologne. Next up, you've got the Eau de Toilette, the EDT. This is going to be the most common concentration that you're going to see labeled on most bottles. Most designers, when they come out with a fragrance brand new, this is what they're putting out, an EDT. Now, that five to 15 percent there isn't any regulation. And again, these numbers are kind of general. Sometimes companies just slap an EDT or an EDP or an Eau de Fresh on this and that doesn't even match the percentage. But in general, EDTs, we see a concentration of 5 to 15 percent. Next up, we've got the Eau de Parfum. And you're going to see the concentration from about 15 to 20 percent. Again, there isn't a set standard here. And unfortunately, you know, it would make sense, right? This should be stronger than the EDT. It's not always the case. Sometimes it is. Other times, you've got something that actually smells a little bit different. Right here with Blue de Chanel, I showed you an EDT. The EDP, a lot of people say this one's more mature. It doesn't necessarily last longer, but it's just got a richer, little bit of a deeper smell. And that's what you get a lot of times when you increase the oil. And lastly, we've got the Parfum at 20 to 30 percent. Now, I'm going to say this is probably 20 percent. Again, big houses, designer houses, they're kind of skimpy on the oil sometimes. If you want something that's really good to project, something that's really strong, again, look to niche houses because they listen to their customers and a lot of you guys are saying, hey, I want something that's going to last for three weeks. So they make fragrances that last for three weeks. Seriously, gents, this fragrance right here by Mark Gebauer, Air Tiger, this thing lasted over three weeks. I put it on some clothing. A month later, I was picking this stuff up. It is nuclear. And if you know of a nuclear fragrance, your favorite, your strongest fragrance in your collection, guys, I want to hear about it down in the comments below. You know I love hearing from you. Choosing the right fragrance that actually has good projection, a good amount of oil. And again, that's not always an indicator that it's going to last. But in general, a parfum or an EDP, that you should get more projection. It should last longer. So if you are worried about your fragrances not lasting long, don't get an O fragrance. 
Fresh or an Eau de Cologne. The next tip to make your fragrance last longer is to apply it to your clothing instead of your skin. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages here. I like applying to the skin, but one of the issues is it heats up and it excites the molecules. They leave the skin, they project more, they just don't last as long. With clothing, you have to be careful because if you apply it, and I would spot apply it because it could stain. Sometimes they put coloring in the fragrances. Other times, the alcohol can react to a dark colored shirt and it could actually stain it. So, I would say, you know, if you're misting it, you know, that means about four to six inches away. That's not spraying a cloud and walking into it. But if you're applying the fragrance four to six inches from the clothing, you should be fine. Uh, but I would spot test it and don't put a whole lot on the clothing. But this will help it last longer because it's in general cooler and it's just going to be able to keep the oil right there on the clothing. So, it's you're going to get whiffs of it throughout the day. That being said, applying the fragrance on the skin actually makes sense in a lot of situations. I mean, during the summer, you're going to be hitting the beach, you're going to be taking the shirt off, you want to smell good, then just apply a little bit more on the chest area, maybe on the shoulders, on the forearms. I like to apply on the back of the neck. I find that those are great areas, especially the back of the neck, even in the hair, especially if you've got hair, it will do a good job. Now, some people talk about the alcohol drying out the hair. I think that that is a very minor thing to be worried about, uh, but when you do spray on your hair, this is a great place for it to last longer. And uh, yeah, if you're going to put it on the body, I go three sprays in the chest area. Depends on the fragrance. If it's a nuclear fragrance, you're lucky to get half a spray. So, you really have to know what you're putting on. But this one right here with a little bit of coconut, love it for the summer. Um, yeah, I probably seven or eight sprays all over the body. This one, I just love beautiful fragrance. Next up, pay attention to the notes. This fragrance right here, I love it in the summer because it lasts long. It's got a coconut note. This coconut note lasts almost all day. This fragrance, I love it because not only is it inexpensive, but it's got a yuzu note. And yuzu is a particular type of citrus found over in Asia, Japan in particular. Um, this thing does a great job lasting. Citrus fragrances in general, because of the shape of the molecules we see in bergamot and other man like mandarin orange and stuff, they evaporate very quickly. That's why they're top notes. And if you're familiar with the bait, we got top notes, base notes. Uh, we also have heart middle notes. But in general, those top notes are going to be more excited. They're going to be quicker to evaporate. They're the first notes we smell in a fragrance. In general, citrus's fragrances don't last very long. This citrus fragrance though, Yuzu Note in particular, does a great job lasting. So, again, if you know what to look for, you can find some great summer fragrances that are going to do a great job lasting even if they have notes that in general or, you know, types, families of notes that don't last long. Now, sticking with that note pyramid, let's talk about florals. So, a lot of guys stay away from florals, which is too bad. There are tons of great just notes out there for florals. But right here, we've got Yang Yang Tuberose. This thing is a very clean L12, L12 by Lacoste. It's inexpensive, but you're going to get just a few hours out of this. This is a great gym scent, something if you just want to wear and smell good for a couple hours. But still, within florals, if you wanted to have projection, you wanted to smell like an 80s badass, you want to smell like gasoline and leather, this is where it's at. Fahrenheit by Dior. It's got amazing longevity and the dominant note here, violet leaf. So, it just goes to show that some florals are going to last and have a very strong masculine scent. Next up, let's talk about aromatic fragrances. These are going to be ones that are plant-based, but they've got a, like a barbershop quality to them. These are masculine, manly fragrances, and I like these because they just do it. They can, they're incredibly versatile. This fragrance right here, you know, it's it was panned. It wasn't the Aventus killer a lot of people thought it was. But honestly, Creed Viking is just a beautiful scent that could be your signature scent day in, day out. You can wear it anytime. And it actually has decent projection and good longevity. Right over here, we got Tom Ford's, what is this, a Beau de Jour. Uh, again, a beautiful scent. Again, if you want to smell like you're coming out of a barbershop, an expensive one, this is a great scent for you. And these fragrances, again, have good projection. So, point I'm making here is choose your fragrance carefully because not all of them are going to last as long. And you may find, hey, you thought this fragrance was expensive. You thought it would last long. Price has nothing to do with how long a fragrance is going to last. That being said, there are certain notes that are pricey and in general are going to command a higher price. When you see oud, especially if it is real oud, it's prominent oud, in general, it's going to drive up the price of the fragrance. But these fragrances in general last longer. Some people think they got a dirty smell to them. But right here, what do we got? Gucci. This is actually their intense oud. This thing lasts all day, sometimes two days. And you've also got Leighton Exclusive. This does have oud in it as well. And I would say Parfums de Marly in general as a house, they do a good job of making fragrances that last long. But if you want a fragrance that's going to last longer and is relatively inexpensive, 
Eros. You can go with the EDT. You can go with the uh, Eau de Parfum. Uh, there really isn't, you know, the Eau de Parfum more, a little bit, little bit more mature, but these leverage vanilla, uh, which is a very sweet and sweet fragrances in general will also have good longevity. Now, what if you're in the store and you're trying to make a choice? Hey, should I go with Dolce Gabbana's just regular light blue or should I go with the O Intense? I generally say go with the EDP, go with the more intense version if you really care about longevity and projection. Sometimes it won't work out, but the majority of the time you'll get at least as strong as the EDT. In this case, this O Intense is so much better than the regular, you know, again, this is a beautiful fragrance, Dolce Gabbana's Light Blue but it is weak. This one is like three or four times stronger. I don't know why they made this one so weak. And I would recommend, again, going out there, reading reviews, going over to Fragrantica, looking, uh, there's tons of YouTubers that do versus videos on that particular fragrance. If you're going to spend 50 bucks, 100 bucks, $200 of your hard-earned money on a fragrance, I will say do a little bit of research and you'd be surprised how much great info you can find. Now, gents, if you can't tell, I love fragrances. And over the last few years, I've probably collected close to 500 bucks bottles every single day. I'm wearing a fragrance in the morning, trying another one in the afternoon, trying to better understand notes and the way fragrances can affect our mood. And that was what was most interesting to me is the way that fragrances made me feel, how I actually felt I performed at a higher level. And I kept finding all this research talking about how you can use scents to get into the zone, to be able to perform, uh, to be able to focus more at work. And there wasn't a set of fragrances. There wasn't any information or education on how to actually do this. So I created my own set over at Mission Fragrances. These three fragrances, Honor, Courage, and Commitment, are specifically formulated to help you reach peak performance. And we've got all the data on this. So guys, I know this is, you know, it's uh, pretty interesting. I, I'm It's a passion project. And if you want to learn more, down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link over to Mission Fragrances. You can enter your email and I'll send you more information about this project, what we're doing. I'm putting these out with limited releases. Everybody that goes, you know, in this basically gets a course. They are getting access to an app that works with these fragrances that helps you be able to condition yourself. These are not fragrances. These are performance enhancing colognes that can help you perform at a higher level. And guys, if this sounds interesting, if you want to be able to release your peak state, click on that link in the description of today's video and go check out what we're doing at Mission Fragrances. Now, if you buy an expensive fragrance and you find that, hey, this thing is not projecting at all, I would say, did you buy it from a trusted source? Some of these fragrances, three, four, five, $500 plus. So guess what? It's very, it's lucrative for a lot of people to counterfeit fragrances and they're putting crap in these bottles. If it looks too good to be true, you see some website, wish.com and they've got it, you know, Creed Aventus for 50 bucks. Guys, come on. You're about to get ripped off this stuff. You know, expect, I would go through a trusted resource. Uh, I find a lot of the gray market discounters are pretty good. There's like four or five. I've got a whole video, which I will link to in the description, which I go over my favorite discounters. That being said, you know, if you really want to go through a trusted resource, a trusted fragrance distributor, usually the box stores. And, and if you want, go directly to the company's website. Now you will find knockoffs and this is a beautiful knockoff. In fact, it's stronger than Creed Aventus. A lot of people say it smells better and it has, you know, gr greater projection than the original, but you know, there are options like this. And I do one thing I'd appreciate about knockoffs is not as many people are knocking off the knockoffs because, you know, you can get this for like 35 bucks versus 350, 400 bucks for Creed Aventus. So, uh, um, you know, if you are really tight on funds, one of the things I do recommend is buying a smaller bottle of the original and then getting a larger bottle of the knockoff because you wear this day to day and then on special occasions you wear this, but uh, yeah, you end up owning both and you can see if there's really a difference in your opinion. Oh, and if you ever want to check the authenticity of a fragrance, there usually is a number at the bottom right in here. And if it's on the bottom of the bottle, it should be on the box, but basically go to the mighty Google, type in fragrance authenticator uh, lot number, and you should have this calculator pop up where you can actually enter that information and see if it is legitimate or not. Now, what if you know the fragrance is authentic, but it's just something off. It doesn't smell right. So first up, it could be your nose. You could be going nose blind. If you haven't, olfactory fatigue is real. This is a natural thing that our body does. Whenever you spray your fragrance on within minutes, you're you're going to become used to it. Come, it, it. This is a protection mechanism that our bodies have. And if you really have an issue with that, go for a walk every 30 minutes or hour, get some fresh air, come back. You will be able to smell yourself. But 
If olfactory fatigue is not the issue, you know it's not a counterfeit, it could be that the fragrance has been damaged. How can it be damaged? Somebody probably stored that fragrance, maybe you, up on a windowsill and sunlight came in. And sunlight is one of the worst things for a fragrance. There are fragrances that lasted, you know, I don't know, 50, 70, maybe even longer. I'm not a fragrance historian here, but I do know that people buy vintage fragrances all the time and love them, but they're stored properly. They are not exposed to sunlight because sunlight, what it does is it goes in and it excites the molecules, causes them to basically break up. Um, it can tear apart the fragrance. And unfortunately, with the alcohol and the oil, it can cause them to basically break up and it's not a good thing. It can, yeah, just really cause the fragrance to, yeah, die. I, I don't know what else to call it. So, when storing your fragrances, do not store them on windowsills. Maybe keep the box, put them back in the box, keep them in a cool place. I'm not saying you got to put them in the fridge. Some people talk about that. I mean, it makes sense. It's cool. It's dark. But uh, I don't think you, I mean, if you've got an extra fridge. For me, yeah, I've got kids and yeah, this that could just turn out wrong. You know. Now, what about rubbing in a fragrance? That's when you spray the fragrance on and you rub it together. Is this a bad thing? Is it going to hurt the longevity? Is it going to cause the molecules to break down? The answer on that second one is no, but what it does do is it mixes the fragrance and the oils with your own oil and it can affect basically the way that the fragrance is going to be released. If it's a linear fragrance, meaning that it will smell the same throughout the life of the fragrance, probably not a big deal. But for a more expensive, complex, uh, beautiful fragrance that's going to have different layers to it, it can really ruin the experience. And I know this sounds totally, you know, kind of crazy, but yeah, spray the fragrance on and let it do its thing. Don't rub them together. It's just, yeah, it's just bad juju. Now, this next point, one that a lot of us don't want to hear, especially if you're getting up there in age, and that is as you get older, fragrances just don't last or project as much because your skin is getting drier. It's just simply the way your body chemistry works. Younger people in general are going to be able to wear fragrances and have them project. Also, their body heat is usually higher. Um, we also see that simply with older people as well, their ability to smell decreases over time. And so, uh, you may be wearing and smell great, but if you can't smell it, believe me, it could be, and you do want to get the opinion of other people. If you're putting something on and you feel, hey, there's nothing wrong with the fragrance. This is legitimate fragrance. I know that, you know, ask other people around you, see what their reaction is. You may be nose blind. It may be something that you just simply cannot smell some of the notes, which happens. And especially after COVID and stuff like that, a lot of people have their damaged, uh, you know, their olfactory system isn't working at a hundred percent. Get the opinions of others because what you don't want to do is put on a lot of a fragrance and then walk into a closed confined area, like an airplane. You're meeting up with some people for an, you know, have an interview going on, you, you know, yeah, want to be careful with putting on too much fragrance. Now, gents, if you've ever worn a beautiful, amazing fragrance and not gotten a single compliment, guys, I feel you. And in solidarity here, let's smash that like button. Why? So the YouTube algorithm knows that you enjoyed this video and it will show you more like it. Seriously though, Sauvage Elixir, one of my favorite designer fragrances released in the last couple of years. This thing is beautiful. This will get you, yeah, compliments and mm, beautiful. Now, really quick, gents, pop quiz. In a 100 ml bottle of fragrance, 3.4 ounces, how many sprays are you going to get out of this on average? What do you think? 100, 200, 500? The answer, gentlemen, is 1,400. So, what I want to stress here is don't be afraid to put on a little bit more. If you really want your fragrance to project, if you want it to last longer, there's nothing like simply spraying on a bit more. I'm not saying go, you know, curly fragrance here with 45, 75 sprays like she does. She, and yes, I love her. She's amazing. But I am a sissy sprayer. I'm probably only spraying like three times on the chest area in general, maybe once on the arm. So maybe five sprays. If I'm hanging out here in the office, I'll spray on the back of the neck. I just like to smell good for myself. But um, guys, if you really want to project more, have a little bit of fun. There's nothing wrong with going through an entire bottle and uh, going and buying another one. So what video to watch next? Well, of course, guys, my favorite fragrances, my picks for this season. Check it out right here, guys. These are my top picks for, uh, yeah, for whatever season this is, because I'll probably change and update this video over the next couple months. But uh, yeah, click on it and go check out my top picks.